Howdy everybody, I appreciate you being here. In today's video, we're gonna be making a jerk bait out of figured maple. I had a lot of fun making this lure and I hope you enjoy watching it. Let's get started. As you can see here, I've already got a sketch done for this particular lure and it is four and a half inches long, total width uh, five eighths of an inch. What we're gonna be making this lure out of is some of this beautiful figured maple. So let's get these cut out and transferred onto our piece of wood here. I'm gonna draw the side profile on first. And I want this wood grain oriented up and down. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put that on right here. And that way we get the striping up and down. At this point, we're gonna do something a little different. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I did make a test lure out of this maple, uh, just because I'm not very familiar with maple. And it didn't swim all that great, mostly because it wasn't a very buoyant wood. It's pretty dense. So I'm gonna do something that I think will help. Uh, while I've got it flat, I'm gonna cut a slot along the top here, and then I'm gonna embed some of this extra balsa that I've got laying around, which is very, very buoyant wood. And I'm only gonna do that on the top half. And what my hope is, is I can increase the buoyancy of the top of the lure. And then I can, of course, add the weight at the bottom of the lure and increase the, the opposition of those forces, the upward and the downward force to create some stability.
Now that I've got my pattern drawn on this one side, <clears throat> I need to mirror it over to the other side. Now, uh, this can be a little bit tricky. Uh, if you eyeball it, it's easy to get it misaligned and then it won't quite be symmetrical. So the method I use here is um, triangulation. And so I take a point on the center line. It really doesn't matter where. I'm gonna put a point there on the center line. And then I'm gonna put another point right on the nose where the um, anchor point's gonna be. And that's also on the center line. I'm gonna pick that little V right there, that point right there. That's gonna be my common point. So I'm gonna go from the nose to that point right there and measure that. And then I'm gonna bring that over to the other side and I'm gonna create like a slight scratch. Okay, that's my first point. And then my second point, I'm gonna do this right here. I'm gonna take it from there to there. And then from there to there, that's my point. Now that's perfectly symmetrical. So what I'll do is I will poke a hole right there. Okay, now I know that's perfectly aligned and then I'll get the body straight and that should align it on the other side. see at this point that it looks pretty rough but uh, I'm going to come back with the rotary tool and smooth all that out a little bit. You can do this with a piece of sandpaper but the rotary tool just makes it go a whole lot faster. Uh, this maple is pretty hard and so uh, it's difficult to carve and so I'm going to rely a little bit more heavily on a power tool than I normally would. I like this particular bit for this kind of work. It's got a nice flat side on it for a uh, smoothing out some of those surfaces.
For a long time, I've been kind of eyeballing the lip slot on these lures. Um, you know, very often I'll carve the lip slot while the lure is still square, but I actually don't prefer to do it that way simply because it makes it harder to carve some of this gill detail uh, that I like to do. Having to carve around that lip slot is kind of a hassle. So um, I'm developing this precision lip slot jig here. Basically what I've got is a small vise here to hold my lure and then I've got this adjustable block here that I can move back and forth to get uh, the lip slot exactly where I want it. And then these two ramps here on the sides support my saw blade so that I can make that cut um, more accurately and repeatably. And uh, this particular one is reversible. I can turn it around. I've got 45 degrees uh, for kind of my diver. It's my most common uh, angle that I use for divers. And then um, 80 degrees for something that's a little bit more of a topwater bait where I don't want as much diving action on it. I can make more of these blocks with whatever angle I want on them and then just swap them out. If there's enough interest in it, maybe I'll do a video specifically on this. Uh, but for now, I just wanted to let you know, you know, kind of what it is and that I'm working on it. Now that I've got that slot cut, I'm going to square it up with this uh, diamond bit.
So as you may recall, I've already made one of these before um, with the maple just because I didn't know how it was going to turn out, um, which is why we added this strip of balsa along the back. Because I've already made one of these, um, I kind of know where the weight needs to be and about how much. So uh, what I've done here is I've hot glued uh, about two grams of lead here just in front of the front hook hanger. And we're going to see how that looks in the water. That looks about right. Just a couple of quick thoughts here uh, as I do this test swim. As is the case with a lot of handmade lures, you're just going to have to figure out the individual and how it likes to be fished. This particular lure likes to be fished slowly. It just doesn't have the buoyancy it needs to burn it in real fast. But as you saw, it does look pretty decent at slower speeds. If you want to support the channel and look good doing it, you can now get your official Zimtex merchandise. Just click on the store tab or the link to my website in the video description. There you can find everything Zimtex, including gear, links to the products I use, and other cool stuff. Now that I've got the lip taped off, I'm ready to start painting. First thing I'm gonna do is cover up this ballast hole here with a little bit of opaque white. All right, with this uh, particular lure, I'm not gonna wanna cover up any more wood than I have to, so I'm gonna keep that spot around the belly um, as small as possible. I think I'm gonna go ahead and also get these gills and the underside of the chin here.
What I want to do at this point is to put a stripe down the side here and I'm going to make a champagne color that's going to be 50% uh, pearl white and 50% pearl satin gold. And uh, I've cut myself out a template here for that stripe. It's going to start out uh, broad and then taper down smaller. And then you can see I've got these ends here so I can align uh, with my lure properly. I'm going to use these Brule Outdoor Eyes. These are the 4mm Fury pattern. All right, I just pulled this guy off the rotisserie. Uh, it's completely cured at this point. Let's go ahead and get a final length and weight on this. Length is four and a half inches, which I believe is about 114 millimeters for my metric viewers. Weight with hooks and split rings is pretty much three quarters of an ounce. So that's a nice weight. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe so I can make more of the content you want to see. Also, feel free to leave a comment. I welcome your feedback and appreciate all of your support. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.